Hey, it's Friday, January 14th, and e-trailer delivered. This arrived today. Um, had a schedule, I'm really pleased. And I uh, had to see how this thing works. And I was wrong, it's not really a mechanical rheostat deal. It is electronic, and I'm loving it. Check this out. When air pressure goes into this cylinder, it pushes on this lever, which is the same thing as doing this function right here. Pretty cool, all right? Very basic. And check this out. This little silver piece right here is a magnet. So what's happening is there's electronics in here. I believe it's that little U20 device. Or I don't know which one of these pieces it is in there that's detecting the magnetic field strength. And that's how it's varying the cur current going out probably to that big transistor right there on the back. Here. This is the amplifier for the uh, trailer circuit. Pretty slick, man. Really cool. I'm excited about this. I like the construction. Really, really nice aluminum housing. I guess that's part of the heat sink for this guy. Let's get this puppy hooked up. All right, I was just sizing this thing up where I thought I wanted it. And I got it all figured out and it's gonna be great. but. They only give you one of these brackets to install it and the bracket will only fit on this side with this recess here on the other side hang on a second i got the screws out the bracket is not wide enough okay so it has to go this way which is fine that works for my design my preference but with only one bracket I'm not too happy with how it's gonna sit. So I'm gonna make my own bracket. Uh, if I had two of these, it'd be cool, but that'd be a pain in the butt to make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this cover with a, another one that has extra material that I could screw the cover to the wall. And then there's not a separate bracket. It's just the cover that you screw to the wall. And I was already sizing up. I got a piece of aluminum here. And if we overhang a half inch on that side and this side, that'll give me a place to put two screws and two screws. And that thing will be solid as a rock. So let's get cutting. I got the bracket done. So I, this is the new and improved bracket and already installed you can see that it's, it's quite a bit larger. It's got the overhang on it where I can put four screws. And they're a 632 thread screw, the original holes. And uh, what I did is I used um, some flathead countersinks so it'll sit flat up against the surface. And now um, I just gotta get this thing installed. I noticed something very interesting on the instructions where the sheet that I downloaded, if you remember, it said right here, 20 amp fuse. Now it says 30 amp self-resetting breaker, 30 amp. And in the instructions, it says 30 amp automatic reset. I can't remember if it was 20 or 30. Uh, yeah, the instructions had 20 amp automatic reset breaker, the ones I downloaded offline, uh, online. So, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. When I went to go buy that circuit breaker the other day, I went to the shelf and I saw the label on the on the shelf and it said 20 amp breaker. And I didn't read the package. When I got home, it was a 30 amp breaker. And I was upset, so I went back and exchanged it to get a 20 amp breaker. So now the instructions are calling for a 30 amp breaker.
Crazy, huh? Anyway, um, that's a whole other project. So now we're gonna get these hooked up and I'm gonna use a solder and heat shrink method. And uh, that's not gonna be very exciting, but I'll show you that when I get there. Okay, I think I mentioned this earlier. Is this line goes out to my brake light switch, which is, of all things, all the way by the rear axle. Um, and it gets pressure from either side, the green or the red side of this valve with this uh, double check valve that's right here. And this little sign label here says, double check valve, all right? So I just teed into that with this silver hose. Got my little rubber grommet right there. Let's show you what's going on inside. And there it is. I'll show you how it looks. There's a manual operation pushing up on this. And this varies the amount of brake activity. I thought I remember reading somewhere that the light would vary its brightness depending on how strong the uh, braking action was. I'm going to step on the brakes now. See, the harder I push, the more the lever moves. Pretty cool. All right, what job wouldn't be complete if I didn't test it? So I have a regular incandescent backup light, and I connected it to the trailer brake circuit right there. All right, now I'm going to manually operate the brake control valve. I mean, uh, breaker, brake control. There's light pressure, and it gets brighter the harder I pull on the lever. Fantastic. What a great brake control this thing is. I love it, man. 